The Apple CEO received an award from the left-wing Anti-Defamation League, the Courage Against Hate Award. <clears throat> and he declared that Apple, which after all are the people who spread the Apple, the apps and the uh, um, all, all so, so much information, their app store and all their, uh, um, uh, you know, the podcasts and things like that that they do. He basically declared that he is in favor. He is one big, just another big corporation in favor of silencing the voice of the people by defining it as hate speech whenever he sees fit. We've got two cuts of him. They're both worth listening to. Let's play cut number one. At Apple, we believe that technology needs to have a clear point of view on this challenge. There is no time to get tied up in knots. That's why we only have one message for those who seek to push hate, division, and violence. You have no place on our platforms. You have no home here. From the earliest days of iTunes, to Apple Music today, we have always prohibited music with a message of white supremacy. <laughs> Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And as we showed this year, we won't give a platform to violent conspiracy theorists on the App Store. So here's the problem, of course. Who defines hate speech? And we know it's the big corporations, and the big corporations are left-wing. You know, the left used to know this. The left used to know that big corporations, corporations are not good or bad, but they are power centers, and power centers have to be diluted. They have to be played off other power centers, and the government, which is a power center, has to play off them as well. The left used to know this, but they've forgotten it because now the corporations are on their side, so they think, hey, we've got the power, so now it must be a good thing. Who decides what hate speech is? Well... Tim Cook has the answer. He decides. Here is he, him telling you that this, I mean, the voice of God speaks to Tim. Let's hear it. My friends, if we can't be clear on moral questions like these, then we've got big problems. At Apple, we are not afraid to say that our values drive our curation decisions. And why should we be? Doing what's right creating experiences free from violence and hate, experiences that empower creativity and new ideas, is what our customers want us to do. I believe the most sacred thing that each of us is given is our judgment, our morality, our own innate desire to separate right from wrong. Choosing to set that responsibility aside at a moment of trial is a sin. It's a sin. It's a sin. The voice is speaking to him. That voice is the voice of God. The voice of leftism is the voice of God. If you have that voice inside you, the most sacred thing you have. What, I mean, what about the people who sacredly disagree with him? <clears throat> what about the value of free speech, which is speech that you don't like being allowed to speak? That's the voice. That's the voice inside me. The voice inside me says the right thing to do is to let people speak. The right thing to do is let every voice be heard and trust that the right will win, the right ideas will win. So th this, is, this is the left, this is the left now, the sacred left, telling us that their religion is, is so sound that the voice of God speaks through them so well that they can decide what hate speech is. I wanna close by uh, reading a little piece of this article that was in the Atlantic Monthly by a left winger. This is a left wing lawyer named Joan Williams. And she wrote a piece for the Atlantic, the Democrats white people problem. And she starts out by quoting Steve Bannon. And Bannon says, I want the left to be talking about racism every day, because if the left is focused on race and identity and we go with economic nationalism, we can crush the Democrats. And what she says is this is uh, he, she feels that this is racist himself. I don't hear Bannon saying that. What I hear Bannon saying is let them get mired in identity politics and we'll talk about the economy, stupid, and, and we can win. That's what I hear Bannon saying, but I'm not going to judge. I mean, Bannon has said some things that I found very suspect, but I'm not going to judge. Now, she says, she says Trump 
is using this by carefully timed injections of racism, the Muslim ban. Okay. Now let me let me stop and take this. This is the voice, the voice of God talking to this leftist, the Muslim ban. Muslim is not a race. Muslim is a philosophy. It is right now a problematic philosophy with at least we can say a cancer of violence growing in, in it, which turns against other Muslims as well as Jews, as well as Christians, as well as the West. There is nothing racist about discussing whether we need to uh, hold back on some kind of Muslim immigration or check it more. His shocking comments after the violence in Charlottesville, Virginia, I've talked about this a million times. I simply feel when you listen or read the transcript that Trump was talking when he said there are great people on both sides. He meant great people on both sides of the pulling down the statue question, not Nazis. I think that's absurd. His unsolicited advice to the NFL on how to handle player protest. Why is that racist? Why isn't it just respecting the flag and expecting our athletes? And after all, athletics is a national sport. It's a, a national event. Why is that racist? Another, what I'm saying to you is everything she says, she's interpreting through the lens of race, of, of leftism. She has the right to do that. She has the right to see the Muslim ban as racist. But I also have the right to explain to her that this is not racist. And if what, what Tim Cook is saying is no, 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 the, that voice of hers, that is that lens that she is wearing, that is the lens of God. That is the moral lens. And my lens that says, no, I can question the ideas of Islam. No, that's not what Donald Trump said at Charlottesville. No, you cannot, you cannot disrespect the flag and expect me to care about your problems. That has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Zero to do with the color of your skin. My voice is the voice of hate. And they are defining it that way. And what's so interesting about this article is this woman has begun to get it, but not quite. She starts telling people she has been telling people on the left that uh, these these white people who voted for Donald Trump were voting their economic uh, interests. Finally, somebody is saying that she says middle income white people, because remember, a lot of these people voted for Obama. She says they voted for Trump not so much because they liked him, though many did, or because they were racist, though plenty were. How she knows that, I don't know, but she says plenty were. But foremost as an expression of class anger, okay? So she she put out this article and she went around giving speeches to the left saying, no, these people actually, the voices of the people actually have something to say. She said she got questions like this one. Why not just wait for the white working class to die off? That was the question she said. And she responded, do you understand now why they voted for Trump? Your attitude is offensive and Trump is their middle finger. Here is a leftist who, for all her prejudice, for all her looking through the lens of leftism, for all her inability to hear what people are saying, here's something, something of the voice of the people. She half gets it because maybe none of it is about race. Maybe none of it. Maybe people want their borders sealed because that's their right is their right to decide who comes in the country. Maybe people want jobs because that gives their lives meaning and they're perfectly happy if the person next to them is another color as long as they both have jobs. Maybe people don't want you to destroy their economy in the name of climate change because they know it won't work, not because they're racist or stupid or anything else. Maybe the voice of the people is the voice you should be listening to instead of Tim Cook's inner voice, which is just his own and just a religious idea that is fake religion, false religion, instead of the true religion, which has sought hard and long for discernment on how to know when that inner voice is the voice of stupidity and when it is, in fact, the voice of God. Maybe instead of silencing the voice of the people, that's the voice you should be listening to. We got